Hey everybody, so today we're going to do an easy, affordable, alternative makeup look. If you're new here, I am an emo kid that never grew out of it, and I make it known to everybody around me with my makeup. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. This look is going to be using all affordable products. You can do it with pretty much any color scheme. All you need is a dark shade, a mid shade, and a light shade, and you're good to go. Before we get into it, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I post every Monday and Friday and do sexy Sundays once a month where we talk sex positivity and self-love. But without further ado, if you want to see my easy, affordable, alternative makeup, my emo makeup, my dead girl glam, if you will, then just keep on watching. Okay, let's get it going. So we are going to start, I think let's just start with, I think, face. I just like getting the base done and then we can go in with eyes and finish up the base. That's just how I function. It doesn't really matter. However you normally do your makeup is perfectly fine. Although if you are personally working with shadows that you know have a lot of fallout, do your foundation last. Just pro tip. Today we're going to be using the CoverGirl Outlast 3-in-1 Extreme Wear Foundation. I am in the shade um classic ivory. So go ahead and just put on your foundation as normal. This foundation has a really, really nice coverage, but whenever I do looks like this, I always go for like extra full coverage because it's creepy glam, you know? Okay, and then for concealer, I'm gonna be using the Milani Conceal and Perfect in the shade, actually no, this shade is going to be a little too light for me, in the shade Light Vanilla. We're also going to use this to prime. I'm not really worried about concealing my under eyes because we're putting a lot of eyeshadow there, but I am going to use this to prime and also just cover up any other areas that I want to conceal. And then whenever I use concealer as primer, just make sure not to apply too much because that can be counterproductive and actually make your eyeshadow crease. Okay, and then to set the face, I'm gonna use the LA Girl Pro Powder in Banana and then the NYX Mineral, set it and don't try it. Nope, it hasn't been called that for years. Shut up. Again, I'm really gonna focus this, ew, there's a hair on my brush. Again, I'm really gonna fo focus this on the apples of my cheeks because that's where I get red. And then I'm just going to very gently set my eyes and my under eyes just because again we are going to be putting a lot of eyeshadow there and I want it to really pack on. Okay and then just to finish up the base I'm going to go fill in my eyebrows really quick off camera and then we will get into the meat and potatoes of the look. Okay brows are on we're going to move straight into the eyes. Today I'm going to be using some ColourPop eyeshadows. I'm mostly going to be using Stone Cold Fox but again whatever you have in your collection will work perfectly fine. The nice thing about this look also is you can use it with whatever colors you want. Literally whatever. Today I'm going to do some dark brown moments, um, but I do this all of the time with, with warm browns and reds, but I just figured there's so much of that on my YouTube channel that I should mix it up just like a little bit. Just like a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our darkest shade and we're going to pack that all over the lid. So whether that's a dark red or for me, I'm going to be using this dark brown in the palette called Fickle Fate. So with a domed eyeshadow brush, I'm just going to pick up a lot and just kind of like place and drag. And then once the bulk of it has been laid down, then I'm going to softly blend. We're also gonna mirror the upper lid with the lower lash line. So I'm going to blend that. This is a definition of a trust the process look. Also just like throwing that out there really quick. So please, if you are trying this at home, when you look like somebody dipped their hand in chocolate milk and then punched you, just keep going, I promise, it'll be worth it. So again, we're just packing and then just softly blending. We don't really need to worry about like making it super seamless because we are gonna be blending this out with more colors. Okay, then we're gonna take our mid-tone color, we're gonna blend it out, and I'm actually gonna hop in with a little bit warmer of a shade. I don't always like mixing warm and cools, but when I'm doing like a dead girl glam or like an edgy look, I think mixing warm reds with cool grays and cool browns with warm reds and vice versa can look really cool. So I'm going to take this shade right here from the Dream Street palette. Again, if you're picking your own color scheme, just use whatever mid-tone shade you want to use. So if you're doing pinks and reds, just do, you know, a mid-tone red, whatever you want to do. Or if you want to follow my color scheme, just grab a warm brown. So start with a cool tone brown, and now we're building up a warm tone brown in the crease to blend out this really nice chocolatey brown. And then we're going to also apply that to the lower lash line. Now, don't be afraid of putting eyeshadow on your lower lash line. We're basically going all around the socket of the eye. This will just give us that nice 
sullen, sunken in Gerard Way realness that we're all going for. This is also why at first we didn't want to blend out that first brown too much because if we blend out that first brown too much, it's just going to get muddy and you won't really get the definition between the two colors. We want it tastefully muddy. And again, following like the socket of our eye, I really take that mid-tone color like into my brow as well. And then you're gonna take a transition color or just a light toned eyeshadow. If you're using pinks and reds, you could do like a light pink or you could do a nice warm brown. When I do this with reds, I stop using reds here and then I go in with a warm brown. I'm gonna take um, this shade from the Yes Please palette. Did I say this was? This is the Yes Please palette. I forgot what I called it earlier, but I don't think I called it Yes Please. But again, any just nice brown. And this is where we're going to really buff and blend. And I'm just using a BH, BH Cosmetics brush. Now, do you see how I'm putting eyeshadow literally in my under eye circles? You want to do that. You want to just go in. This look is not for the faint of heart. You asked for an edgy eyeshadow look, you're getting one. We're putting eyeshadow in our under eye bags. And take your time blending. And remember, the lighter the color, the bigger the brush. The darker the color, the smaller the brush. So as we are going in with lighter and lighter shades, your brush can get a little bit bigger. But also try not to go too far over the dark spot. So I'm keeping my brush right on the outside. I'm not going in and reblending where this dark brown is. So once we've gotten out to the lightest shade, now we're gonna work back in and re-intensify the mid-tone and the darkest shade. Then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna re-intensify that warm shade just to re-intensify anything we may have blended away in the blending process. Boom, and then going back in with that first brown, packing it on the lid, and then re-blending it through the crease. This brown actually stayed really well. I was pretty impressed. Boom, we're looking nice and creepy. And this is one of those eyeshadow looks where once you master it, it looks a lot harder than it actually is. Like it just takes some blending, but as long as you use the right brushes, and by that I mean don't go in with a bunch of big brushes and try to stay within the area that you're working in. So if you're working with the lightest shade, stay on the outside. If you're working with the darkest shade, stay on the inside. If you're working with the mid-tone shade, stay in the middle of the two, if that makes sense. As long as you stay within, if you color within the lines, and if you don't go crazy, it will, it will look good. I promise it will. Now this wouldn't be an edgy alternative makeup if we weren't wearing a little bit of eyeliner. So I'm going to take the um, Koki Velvet Smooth uh, pencil liner in the shade Deepest Black, and I'm going to put that on my waterline. And also dot it through my lashes. And then we're going to immediately go in, as soon as I can find a brush. And then we're just going to go in and blend out the lower lash line. Okay, and then I am not particularly a winged eyeliner gal. I can like myself a wing every once in a while, but to me it is not a staple of an edgy makeup look. If you enjoy them, go ahead and pop on a wing. If you enjoy them and are confident doing them, go for it. I'm opting out of eyeliner for this look besides just a small line of eyeliner to make it easy to apply fake lashes because we are going to apply fake eyelashes and I'm going to tell you all the tips and tricks to make it easy to apply fake eyelashes and this is one of them. Just doing a small little line of eyeliner right at the root of your lashes to hide, to hide your lash band, to give you a guide of where to place your eyelashes and to also give you a little bit of a buffer if you place them a little bit askew. And for that, I just used the NYX Matte Liquid Liner. You like how creepy Todd is being back here? He's just hanging out. Okay, let's move on to face real quick. So let's start by contouring. I'm gonna use the NYX Sweet Cheats Cheeks Matte Powder uh, contour, um, bronzer, blush, in taupe, and I'm going to place it a little bit higher than my actual cheekbones to chisel out my face. Okay, and then for bronzer, bronzer, I'm going to use the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in Sunkissed. I like this especially for, like, edgy looks 
because it just is the perfect color to give your face, well, perfect color for me, to give your face some shape without being like super bronzy. Because obviously, like, we're trying to look like a glamorous dead sewer rat, so we don't necessarily want to look like a sun-kissed bronze babe right now, you know? Okay, and then for blush, I'm gonna use, I just love these NYX Sweet Cheeks. This whole line is just really nice. This is in the shade Bang Bang. And we are gonna do a little bit of an e-girl moment. And we're going to place blush basically as like the last way to blend out our eyeshadow. So I'm literally placing blush across my cheeks. I'm just patting it and I am going to go up into the forehead a little bit just to round everything out. Let's zoom in a little bit. I am going to place heavier blush like on the actual blushed part of my face, like the actual like cheek part of my face, but I am going to take this all the way in. And of course across the nose because you got to, right? I'm not like super in to the e-girl blush trend, but I do think it can look so cool and edgy. So I'm trying to do like a little bit, but also not like too overboard. And then to cut through the blush and bronzer on the nose and re-give us some structure, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight just the tip and bridge of my nose. This is the BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlighting Palette, and as you can tell, it is well loved. So I'm gonna take this shade right here. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the pink shade too. And I'm just going to hit the bridge of my nose. You can also just use your finger for this if you don't have like a little precise brush. I love highlighting with this brush. It's so just pinpoint precise. I love it. Also, while we're here, going to highlight our brow bone. Because you bitch loves a good brow bone highlight. It looks almost done, but we are going to apply our fake eyelashes so the first thing you're going to do when you get your eyelashes these are also these are the kiss faux mink they're the kiss faux mink matte black in the style matte velvet they are everything i love them the first thing you're going to do when you get your lashes especially if you're a noob to lashes is trim them i promise it just makes everything so much easier even if you trim them to be a little bit shorter than what you actually need. Trim from the long side of the lash, so just clip off the extra long side of the lash. So you're gonna wanna trim them, and then you're going to want to apply the glue and wait. You hear me? This is the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive with Aloe. This is my favorite lash adhesive, and I'm just going to apply some straight to the lash band being pretty generous with it, how much I apply. And then you're gonna wait for this to basically become translucent, and then you're going to apply la the lashes. The biggest mistake of people who try to apply fake eyelashes is they try to apply it while the glue is still wet, and that makes everything a disaster, 100% a disaster. And then I'm just going to apply a little bit of mascara. This isn't affordable, but just whatever mascara you have works. It doesn't really matter for this video. I just don't own a cheap mascara because I'm very, very picky with mascaras and I haven't found a cruelty-free cheap one that I love right now. So moral of the story, just apply whatever mascara you enjoy. It doesn't really matter right now. But especially with faux mink lashes, definitely apply your mascara first because you get way more life out of your fake eyelashes if you aren't gunking them up with your mascara. Okay, and then I'm going to set my face with a little bit of the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Setting Spray. Okay, and then while we are waiting for our eyelashes to dry, we're going to pop on some lipstick. This is my favorite, like, edgy Dead Girl Glam lipstick. I talked about it in my recent favorite videos. What? I talked about it in my recent favorites video. I love it so much. It is the Milani Amore Matte... What? <laughs> I can't talk today. The Milani Amore Matte Satin in the shade Luxe. So I'm just going to apply some of this it's also such a comfortable liquid lipstick oh again the balance of cool tones of cool earth tones and warm earth tones in these looks i just mm, nut they're so good okay my lashes are still drying because lashes take a long time to dry so i'm going to go do my hair real quick off camera and then we will come back to pop on the lashes okay we are back it's time to apply our fake eyelashes. So I've just been waiting for the glue to dry and basically how you can tell is if you touch the glue and if you're met with like a little bit of resistance, do you see? It's pretty good. You want it to be tacky essentially. You 
definitely need either tweezers or like a lash placement tool, but it's a lot easier than your fingers. So what I like to do is grab it right at the middle of the lash. And what I do is I place the inner third. So I place it, kind of tuck it up in there. And then I grab the end of the lash, pull it tight and place it where I need it. And then I go ahead and squeeze the middle, make sure the middle's all applied down. Then I just go through, make sure all parts of the lash are on. These ones are a little too far out for my liking. I like them usually just a little bit closer in, but if you're not used to wearing eyelashes, sometimes if that inner corner is too far in, it's so uncomfortable, it's the worst. And the nice thing about waiting till the glue is tacky is once you stick it on, it's on. It's really nice. So other than if you mess up placement, but even then you still have like a little bit of wiggle room to kind of poke them back off and put them back on again, but makes it so easy. So again, grab the middle of the lash, but kind of towards the inner part of the lash. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Place the inner portion of the lash. Make sure it's good and on there. Grab the outer part of the lash, pull tight and place. And then you can zhuzh from there. Boom. These eyelashes are beautiful. I can't get over them. And once the eyelashes are on, this is the end of the look. My, my affordable, easy, alternative makeup. My true dead girl glam, affordable makeup. This is actually slightly different from what I normally do. I mean, it's still within the realm of what I do, but I love the blush lining the eyeshadow. I'm definitely going to use that like every day now. I'm obsessed with it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.